Hey everyone, Tony D and little Joan here with a hot take about Trump. Yeah, it's about time we talk about Trump again. What the hell he, he's doing? Well, as always, he's running circles around the Democrats. He's set another trap for him. This one to me is so painfully obvious. I don't know how people haven't called it out yet, but I'm sure people will. Um, but let's back backtrack a little bit. The uh, Portland thing, pretty much a trap for the Democrats, right? I mean, it was a lose-lose situation. Now, as long as Trump didn't send the goons in to bust everybody's head, as some right-wingers wanted to do, uh, it's a hard sell to call him a tyrant. I mean, he waited weeks to send federal guys in, and the only reason he sent them in is because they were attacking the courthouse night after night. And anyone who looks at the footage can't really argue credibly otherwise. This, and again, you know, he's got the media shilling for Antifa and these extreme leftist groups as if, hey, this is going to work. Yeah, it's kind of working on people who you don't really need to convince not to vote for Donald Trump. You're kind of just sort of treading water poorly. Because every once in a while, some of these people wake up and they drill down and they go, oh, I've been lied to. Um, it's happening again. And, and this time the move is, well, um, should we cancel the election? Maybe postpone it for a little while? Well, the Democrats jumped on it. No, of course not. We'll never do that. Oh, well, now you've screwed yourselves. <laughs> now any chance of delaying Joe Biden's coronation and then eventual debate with Trump, you've just shot yourself in the foot. Now you have no flexibility. Now you have to show up. Um, and that's the last thing you really wanted to do, right? I mean, they think the election is going to go for them. They think they're winning this thing. I mean, I see, I saw, uh, I, I, one, of the, one of the people I still subscribe to on Twitter uh, is Harry Shearer. Uh, and he's, he's so smart and he's so funny. But, you know, he hates Trump. Um, but he hates Trump in a smarter way than most celebrities do. I mean, he's very well read. Um, but even he thinks like, oh, yeah, I'd love to see the election held today. Well, Harry, you'd be in for quite a rude shock like most people in 2016. Trump's going to win. Uh, <laughs> Trump has got, and I was just discussing this not too long ago, um, Trump has got something like 40% of the black community behind him, which is an insanely high number for a Republican. Yeah, and I've been seeing tons and tons of black YouTubers uh, singing the praise of Trump all day long. They love him. They love him. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, look, <laughs> Marxism, intersectional feminism, this stuff does not sit well with most people. And, you know, the black community is at heart pretty traditional. Pretty traditional. And I think part of the reason is, uh, besides the fact that the Democrats have sort of taken the black community and the black vote for granted so many years, I, I think it's the abandonment of tradition on the democratic side. Um, again, I keep saying limits. There are no limits on the left side of politics, none. Uh, I mean, you look at Katie Hill, uh, who I love to talk about. I, I, this was a Congresswoman who was on the fast track. She was female. Oh, uh, but she's in a poly relationship, see, with her husband and a young female staffer. Yeah. That wasn't going to fly. It wasn't going to fly on any planet. Um, even though she was, and she's photographed nude, smoking a bong, and nude combing her hair. It's like, lady, um, you know, at least, you know, Republicans and Democrats would have the sense to cover that stuff up. <laughs> you know, uh, JFK didn't bang hookers in front of everybody. So... You, you you know, the left has lost its way in that. They don't understand, like, well, this is all acceptable, right? No, it's not. People have things to say about it. It makes people weird and uncomfortable. There's still religious people in this country. There are still people who have values. And, 
you know, if you're going to have an orgy <laughs> and represent the district, there are certain people who go, yeah, I don't think you should be doing that. Um, you know, am I one of them? Eh, you know, in the case of Katie Hill, I, I, it felt, you know, the, the staffer to me, uh, it, it felt like a double, double standard. If, if, Katie, if it had been her husband who was the congressman instead of her, I think they would have crucified him, especially if he was a Democrat. And, you know, I don't think it's right that someone like that would be dating a staffer. That's, you know, she shouldn't be a staffer. She shouldn't be on the payroll. Now, if she wants a little side piece, a young side piece, you know, that's perfectly legal, but a staffer, that's, uh, no. No, 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 no. You know, part of part of the thing is they should just legalize prostitution, and some of this stuff would just go by the wayside because it would be perfectly legal for these people to indulge their, you know, sexual pro, uh, proclivities, and uh, you could just order up yourself a fresh prostitute and have a good time, and no one would blink twice. Um, but uh, getting back to Trump, Trump is, you know, he's not even that traditional, but he's pretty traditional. I mean, he's been married a bunch of times. He's got kids. He's got a family. He's got a business. You know, he's traditional enough. Uh, the Democrats just keep pushing further left, hoping to hit new ground or some kind of new audience that no one's interested in. No one's interested in these fringe ideas of Marxism and communism and socialism. No one, except a tiny minority of people who don't have it together enough to even explain their own ideology. You know, Trump keeps incorrectly calling them anarchists. They're not, they're communists. Although I think I understand why he calls them anarchists. I think he calls them anarchists because that reads better, because it's like anarchist anarchy. If he calls them communist, makes them sound like old and paranoid uh, because it has that kind of communist, has kind of a ring to it from like, you know, the McCarthy era. And he doesn't want that. So I think he likes the word anarchist better, which is why I think he probably understands that they're communist, but he prefers the term anarchist because it sounds scarier uh, than uh, communist, you know. To some extent, people think, well, communists have a plan. Anarchists, they're just crazy. Um, but, you know, that's not true. But, uh, and, and again, they're really communists. That's pretty much what they are. They're, they're, they're communist LARPing, I should say. Um, so Trump's trap is he wants the election. He loves this election. Can't wait to have this election. And he can't wait for... The Democrats to try to pull together their stupid convention. Now that now the Democrats can't cancel their convention, really, they probably will be forced to go all digital. But they're gonna have something, and Antifa's gonna be there. Whatever they have, oh, Antifa's coming. They've been planning this since Bernie got screwed, and since Bernie got screwed the first time. So expect uh, the the leftists, and you know. The Democrats have signed a deal with these people, and when you sign a deal with the devil, you get screwed, and this is how they're screwing themselves. That, you know, and they made it even worse by uh, they're banning tear gas in Milwaukee. So something like 100 police organizations have now refused to do the security for the uh, um, convention. Now, I don't know if that's a move to cancel the convention utterly and go completely digital and then say, well, it was really the cops that made us cancel it. Or if that's just, again, the circular, circular firing squad that, it, that, that is the left side of politics screwing themselves again. Either way, you know, if they go all digital, it'll be a boring event. It'll, be, it'll, it'll feel even more illegitimate that Biden is the nominee, especially when he picks a VP and especially when there's 
virtually no voting. See, like at a convention, there's a sense that there's like a vote going on, even though it's pretty orchestrated and there are rules to keep anybody real from getting in. But it feels like a real, you know, chaotic event. And it is an important event for both parties, which is why I'm kind of shocked Trump canceled his. But his is almost unnecessary. But for the Democrats, it's absolutely crucial. It's absolutely crucial that they have this big party and nominate Biden and his VP. Everybody's waiting for the VP now because really you're going to be voting for whoever that is. And it may be Hillary Clinton, according to H.A. Goodman. Maybe. Uh, you know, this is 2020. Anything, anything can happen.